nearly one year after four University of Idaho students were murdered near campus. Their families are finding ways to remember them. Ethan Chapin was one of those students, a triplet born and raised here in Skagit County. And this month, he would have turned 21. I sat down with his parents, Jim and Stacy, to talk about how their family is doing, what comes next, and Stacy Chapin's new book, The Boy Who Wore Blue. On a beautiful, star-filled October night, triplet children were born, and oh, what a sight. Three healthy babies, what could we say? Such a joyful, amazing, and momentous day. But there was something incredible about that boy who wore blue, whose bubbly personality immediately shone through. I just needed people to have the true story of him. For people who know him, it's a little bit of a memoir. And I think for people who don't know him, it's literally the message how Ethan lived his life. Tell us about him. Ethan, he was truly uh, one of a kind. He kid. was an exceptional kid from the day he was born. I mean, he just lived life to the fullest. He kept everybody in check. And not just because he was 6'4". No, no, not because he was 6'4". <laughs> it's just that there was just a way about him. And he had a good message. You know, his message is just be yourself and have fun and, and do good for everybody. You just miss him walking into a room and yeah. giving you a hug and making some funny comment. And he just, he was amazing. Is there anything that you miss the most? Hugging him. Oh, oh, I'd give anything. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'd give anything to hug that kid again. In his blue Patagonia, his puffy blue Patagonia coat. Right? How are you after almost a year? It's shocking it's been a year. We spent, I call it, a period of time, there was about five months that I, I mean, I call it the depths of hell. I mean, we went there, we, we've been there. I think you have to go there in order to start the journey out that is the process of healing and figuring out how you live your life without this person that's been in it forever. I have a place kind of <laughs> where Ethan lives in there and it's a safe spot. Um, you know, I just, for me that's, but I think overall, under all of these circumstances, I think we're doing well. This thing could took one of our kids, but it, it can't take the rest of us. I think about a Maisie and Hunter a lot because I'm a multiple. And there's a unique, special connection that multiples have that other siblings do not have. Yeah. I know that. And so I thought about them often having lost a piece of themselves yes. in losing their brother. Jim and I can sit here and tell you what it feels like to lose a child. I honestly cannot tell you what it must feel like for Maisie and Hunter to lose literally a piece of them. It's, it's profoundly different for them than it is for us. They came home uh, yeah, mid-May after school was out and, and they spent all summer at, at our Idaho home and, and uh, both worked. And uh, they, it seems like they healed a lot during that period of time. It's just going to take time for us all. When we send our kids off to school, to college, we think it's one of the Safe. safest places they could be. Yes. I mean, Moscow, Idaho? Not in your wildest imagination or nightmares even. Right. Could you imagine something like this? We were at Parents Weekend the week before. I mean, literally the week before, and just had the best time with the kids. And you would never think no. that was, something like this could no. ever it happen. It was the there. best weekend, and we were in the we were in the King Street house that weekend. I mean, we I were. you know you just we were like, oh, what a these kids are living their best life. You put a post on social. You sent it to me that you spend no time being angry, that would not be energy well spent. We don't use that word anger. We can't bring Ethan back. I mean, let's all be honest. I, nothing we can do can bring him back. And when you start to feel angry, it, it literally can take you down a rabbit hole that just isn't a healthy place to be. So what does justice look like for you in this? Oh, I have not been asked that question. The person who is in jail right now, that. It's gonna, it's gonna take care of itself. 
you know, nothing we can do or say or anything is going to change what's going to happen to that individual. You have no plans to even go no. to the trial, to no. even be in the courtroom no. from no. start to finish? No. no. There is no closure. The only closure I have is knowing that my family is, is, is good and healthy and we move on with our lives and do what we were doing prior to this terrible thing that's happened to our family. It's a choice. You know, you just have to tuck that kid somewhere in there and I I'm thankful for the 20 years we had with him. Totally. 100%. So you have a tattoo I do. on your arm. <laughs> so it's from a note that Ethan wrote me, probably the fourth grade. And you know, we just signed it, I love you, Mom. We are coming back up onto Parents Weekend mm -hmm. and a big birthday big for your birthday. kids, 21. 21 was something that we talked about forever. Having these triplets turn 21 was gonna be the greatest you know, yeah. the greatest night ever. That night cannot take away from Maisie and Hunter. So, you know, Parents Weekend, it'll be a little bit camouflaged in Parents Weekend, and then we'll go out and we're gonna celebrate Maisie and Hunter. Yeah. We cannot forget that that's the priority. Is there any thing that you would wanna share with parents? Parents who've suffered just a horrific loss. Find something positive in every day. Find something that you, feel like brings you joy in a day. You, there is always something there, no matter how dark the day feels. We found it yeah. every single day. He was selfless, caring, generous, and warm. And wherever he went, the friends would all swarm. We want to pass on his positive energy. This tale, the story of the boy who wore blue, is a message for everyone, including you. That's his legacy for that you. That is. Yeah, it is. Life is short, so give it your best. Be happy, smile, and encourage the rest. My sincere gratitude for Stacy and for Jim for sharing their story. This sweet book, The Boy Who Wore Blue, it is on sale right now. A portion of the proceeds from each book will go to Ethan's Smile Foundation. The foundation honors his love of life and people and adventure and will provide post high school scholarships for students from the town of Conway where he grew up and students at the University of Idaho. And finally, we want to wish Ethan's siblings, Maisie and Hunter, a happy 21st birthday, which they will celebrate this weekend.